Hi, this is Sophie and welcome to today's Insight and Check-In. So when we're wanting to change certain behaviours and habits that don't serve us, one of the most useful things we can do is to develop a strong relationship with our inner child. In uh, different modes of psychology, particularly transactional analysis, um, there has been discovered three ego states that live in, basically live inside our head. Parent, adult and child. The adult lives in the present moment. The parent comes from our past and the parent can be nurturing or critical. You've probably all heard of the inner critic. And the child obviously comes from our past and can be free, which is the fun loving, playful, uh, child or the adapted child and that's the parts of us that have adapted ourselves in order to cope and survive. They're sort of coping mechanisms that don't usually serve us very well in adulthood but they can typically be unconscious, we're not even aware of them. Might be people pleasing, uh, might be creating a big wall between ourselves and others with mistrust, um, might be through rebellious behaviour, uh, might be all sorts of, of, of different um, mechanisms that we take on in order to cope. So today it's about connecting with our inner child. This is our emotional self, so any emotion we experience is the child part of us, whether that's joy or anger, fearfulness, feeling of rejection, abandonment, that all comes from the child part of our psyche. It's also our divine spark or our creative self. And so when we're fully connected to our inner child, we feel most inspired in our lives. And sometimes if we feel a bit down, a bit unmotivated and lacking inspiration, it's usually because we've lost our connection to our inner child. Okay, so what can we do? Well, I'm going to take you through a guided visualisation to connect with your inner child and check in, see how he or she is doing and what does she need. And the simple question of asking yourself, as I've suggested you do in these other videos, is what do I need or what do I want, is a useful question to connect with him or her. OK, so let's get started. Deepening the breath, feet firmly planted on the ground or if you're lying down, that's absolutely fine. Spine nice and straight so you can allow the Kundalini energy to travel up from the base of the spine right up to the top and out of the head. So deepening your breath again. Letting the breath exhale drop away. Breathing in again. Reminding yourself that this is my time. This is a time for me to connect with my inner self. And when we connect with our inner self, then what we extend outwards is more beneficial, and both to ourselves <clears throat> and to others. So if you want to just close your eyes, as we've done before, imagine roots growing out of the base of your feet, pushing deep into the core centre of the earth and drawing the energy up from the earth all the way through your feet, through your legs, through your torso, to your chest and heart space, up to your shoulders, down to the tips of your fingers, back up through your arms, through your throat, and up through your head like a fountain coming out of the top of your head and back down onto the earth. So feeling that strong rooted connection to the earth, feeling grounded and centered and then allow sunlight to drop into the top of your head like liquid gold filtering through every single cell of the body all the way down through the shoulders to the tips of the fingers, down through the heart space to the tips of the toes. 
and then allowing both of those energies to circulate and settle in the heart space. Focusing on your breath for a moment. Getting nice and still, a little bit quiet. If the mind is busy, just allow the thoughts to come and go like clouds without hanging on to them. You're being curious. You're allowing your mind to be. And then you're bringing your attention to your body, to anywhere that you're drawn to. It might be some discomfort, some backache. It might be some aches and pains somewhere else, or you simply may be drawn to a certain area of your body that you wish to place your attention on. Remembering that by drawing your attention to wherever your body is taking you to, is giving you a chance to honour and acknowledge what's going on for your physical body and to connect your heart and your mind. And then drawing your attention to the third eye your all-seeing eye, your seat of intuition. Imagining it's an eye and the eye is wide open, all-seeing. And then imagining stepping inside the space that is your third eye, so perhaps shrinking yourself very small taking a step into that third eye space, what does it feel like? Does it feel comfortable and welcoming? Does it feel dark and gloomy? Whatever it feels like, just let yourself be with that. Allow yourself to be in that space. Absorbing all the wisdom that it has to offer. The third eye is limitless. It's not limited by the experiences you've had so far in your life up to this point. It is limitless. Able to see everything you need to know at this moment in time. Allowing yourself to get even more comfortable, perhaps cross-legged on the floor of this space. Hands open with the palms open to receive, allowing yourself to receive this wisdom. And if there's anything you need to change, perhaps it feels like a hard stone floor. Imagine placing a cushion and sitting on a cushion. Perhaps you want some lighted candles. Perhaps you'd like a Buddha, perhaps you'd like to visualise being outside. This is your imagination that you can use. You are in charge and you can create whatever you want and whatever images you wish to have that bring greater comfort and clarity to your life. That allow you to be in that space and fully open up to it. So getting comfortable, more comfortable in that space. I invite you to receive your inner child. So picture yourself as a small child. You might have a memory of a photo or maybe nothing comes to mind. See if you can picture her in your mind. If you're struggling to picture her or him, just sense into him or her and how they're feeling. There's no effort here. So allowing him or her to come into your vision or into your thoughts and feelings, your sensing, and just get a sense of how he or she is doing right now. What sort of stance do they have? What's the expression on their face? Are they busy playing, building sandcastles, or are they standing there a little bit nervous? 
a little bit discombobulated. What sense do you get of your inner child? It might be the first time that you're doing this exercise and perhaps it feels a bit strange and a bit uncomfortable for you. And perhaps you sense from your inner child that he or she feels a little bit uncomfortable and unsure of this activity. And so you as the adult are stepping in at this point to reassure your inner child if that's what he or she needs. And you can sense what that might be. It might be through words. It might be through gestures. Perhaps you already have built a relationship with your inner child and, and remained fully connected to her over these years. And perhaps she jumps into your arms for a great big hug. Or perhaps he or she is a little bit more reticent and it's for you to approach him or her and introduce yourself as part of her and as loving her and caring for her and him or him. And reminding him or her perhaps how much you love him or her, how much you will never abandon him or her, that you are there for him or her, that you will never leave them, that you are always there for them. And this is where certain experiences in our childhood that have been difficult for us, this is where we can truly heal that by reparenting ourselves, by stepping in as our adult self and comforting our inner child and reassuring them. Alternatively, they may have a message for you. Perhaps you are picturing them at a time when they were happy-go-lucky, didn't have a care in the world, and thoroughly enjoyed life. So perhaps they have a message for you if life has got a bit onerous. So you're just allowing all sorts of different possibilities in this moment. Perhaps you just want to sit on a bench next to your inner child and just get a sense of him or her, or they or them, if you prefer those pronouns. Just allowing yourself to fully connect with this little one who lives and breathes inside of you, who is your divine spark, your creativity. Allow his or her voice to be heard. And now as we start to come to the end of this guided visualization and meditation, let's do our final connection with our little one, asking her what does she need or he need or they need. Perhaps they need a big hug, perhaps they want to make some daisy chains with you or run down some sand dunes or jump in a swimming pool whatever feels freeing to you whatever feels joyful and feel them close to your heart as you come to the end of this time that we have together and so bringing your hands in a namaste position in the heart space bowing your head in gratitude for this moment. Nice breath in. Honouring where you've been, where you are, 
and where you're going and taking that beautiful little girl or boy with you wherever you go. Be gentle with yourself and see you again.